Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis, and look what I have on the block today. I have something super cool from GearBest. This is a little DIY kit. This is the GB130. It has all premium parts on there, top to bottom, and now they're including Runcam Swifts, which are really awesome. They were including kind of these cheapy little China cams, and I'm glad that they've gotten away from that, and they've listened to the racer pilots out there, and a lot of us want run cams on our racing quads because they are quite high quality. I, I like them and that's usually what I prefer to fly on mine. Um, the build went pretty smooth. I had a reptile PDB on the very bottom here and I was able to get my receiver up inside the stack here and just run my antennas out the, the back here. But I'm gonna probably reposition some of these wires in here, tuck them in uh, a little more underneath the frame or the uh, the camera there. So, uh, But I do like the way that this little True X looks. Uh, if I look at it from the very top, you can see it's definitely hardcore True X. and. If you know about True X quadcopters, they fly really, really well. They they corner, they ex they corner really well. They accelerate out of a tight turn really well, and you don't really lose a lot of speed. And they don't do a lot of sort of sl side sliding like some of the H frame quads do in a turn. So um, years ago, when we were trying to do nice tight turns, a lot of times it was really challenging to get a nice tight turn without sliding too much but these are amazing how they corner so I do have my X4R underneath here and I have it running on S bus and it comes with an SP race and F3 board on there so that's pretty nice you can hook up clean flight or beta flight to it and flash it whichever firmware you want as long as it's SP racing uh, on there now the ESC's the ESCs that come on it are DYS 10 amps, but they are BL Heli. They'll run 3S. I wouldn't recommend trying to put 4 on it, just because it's the ESCs might be marginally accepting 4S. So you don't want to overstress this power system. Uh, this is also, by the way, an 850 nanotech with a XT60 on there. Now. The way I've seen some guys position their XT60 on the bottom, have it facing out the bottom, they're doing it on the side. But for me, I just decided to do it in the back. It's not going to break off because this is a pretty lightweight quad. Now the motors on here also are also super high spec. They're little Emax motors. A lot of these guys like these red bottom motors right now. They're pretty much what is predominantly popular right now. Uh, these are 1306 4000 kvs super super beastie and 
really high power to weight ratio for a little 130 quad. But you probably noticed also up inside this frame, look at how much camera tilt I was able to get. I'm almost at six, 60 plus degrees right there. It's, it's almost vertical. It's pretty awesome little frame. So you can go pretty horizontal and way up with your camera. And then I've got my VTX back here in the back that came along with it. And that's a 200 milliwatt as well, so this, including a 200 milliwatt, which is really, really nice. And if you have a vertical mount on your VTX, you could probably come up through this top part right here. And you could do a top mount if you wanted to, but I would rather have this bend back and not have any issues with breaking off. Sometimes when I hard mount things, I seem to have a lot of breakage. Um, However, I think this will be just fine the way I have it set up. I'm going to probably put an extra zip tie in there just to hold it down. But I also have VHB in there. And I had minimal crashes with this one because uh, it's not a 200. It's not going to be a huge freestyle machine. So this one's pretty much for like cruising and like close proximity FPV racing or just flying around having fun. Um, the nicest thing that I can tell you about 130s, guys, is the fact that the parts are way cheaper and you can fly them in smaller spaces they're probably just as noisy as some of the other ones uh, because you have a pretty high revolution of uh, this 3x3 prop that comes along with it now these are dowels by the way this didn't come with it I just had these out and took these off um, for my demonstrations this is what I flew mine with for my little flight demo uh, that I showed you guys earlier but we also have one of my favorites on here as well is an Amway antenna. These have been some of the most durable antennas for me this year so far. Uh, they, they seem to take a, a tremendous amount of abuse. They really do. And when you put yours on there, you can bend it back a little bit because when you're flying, you want this to be pretty straight up, sort of horizontal with the horizon as you're in forward flight. And that'll give you a better signal and this is a little tall you could actually get a little shorter antenna for this and that might be a little better for this quad make it a little more compact but that's the nicest thing about 130s they're super compact you could kind of just throw this in the back of your truck or your car and you can fly it on a lunch on a lunch break which is uh, really cool you don't want to uh, of course you don't want to fly it with there's a lot of people but Overall, the frame is pretty durable. I'll show you the bottom plate here. This is three mil carbon on this bottom plate, and I believe it's a, a 3K weave on there, so it's a pretty nice weave. It has a sort of a, it doesn't have a 45 degree tilt on here in the weave, which I would like to see, but it is fairly durable. And then again, guys, you're flying a 130, so it's super light, so you don't need a, you don't need a, a thick four mil frame on something so small that would just add quite a bit of extra weight and then that's gonna you know also decrease your power to weight ratio in your punch out because uh, on 3s you're not going to get a ton of punch out anyway so i like to really trim a lot of the fat off these quads when i build them so that they they fly a little better lighter weight now also the side plates on here are also two mil so a lot of the other ones that have been coming out have been 1.5 and and below. So for a micro quad, having two mil side plates is super awesome. It's also going to make it way more durable for you. So I'll go ahead and sum this up for you, and I'll talk about some of the things that I really like about this quad, and I'll also talk about some of the things I don't like about it, uh, what I'd like to see in future versions coming out from GB Quads or GEP RC. Now, this quad would be super super cool if it had detachable arms this unibody is just fine but um and, and for the, the the weight you don't really need detachable arms but it would be nice if it had um, if i broke an arm that i'd be able to just put another arm on there instead of replacing the whole bottom plate uh, but let's talk first about stuff i like about this quad the power to weight ratio with these emax motors super good um, nice punch out really tight rolls and tight cornering and acceleration out of the corners um, so you're going to get a nice racing quad out of this one now like i said it's not really a freestyle quad but another thing i like about it is the fact that you can have a ton of camera tilt 
you can have mild to wild. You have plenty of room for plenty of tilt, which is super, super nice uh, for trying to do some big power loops and things. Now, the antenna setup on this one, I'd like to see this one somehow redesigned so that we could sort of get um, a little more clearance back here and maybe some kind of back plate coming off the back here would be nice if they included an extra piece of carbon back here that came out and supported this underneath here because I do have a little bit of hangover back here uh, and you know hangovers are never good so that does induce breakage in some crashes so you want to watch out for that. Uh, the ESCs seem to be fine for this power system. I would like to see maybe boosting these up to 20 amp ESCs because now 130s are starting to include 20 amp on here and we can much more easily run 4S. So the next version of this, the next DIY kit, I'd like to definitely see some miniature 20 amps come along with this uh, and some motors that can handle that kind of voltage would be super nice. Uh, I believe these Emacs 1306s can handle 4S. So, but we're gonna have to run around a 1000 milliamp 4S battery on here. You don't really wanna go above 850 or 1000. Now, I like the kit itself. It was super easy to build. I didn't have any problems putting it together. And in the past, I've hated building 130s because they're so tiny and it's really difficult. You have to use a magnifying glass to get in there and try to get some of this stuff soldered up. But this one kind of builds like a big quad, which is kind of nice for me. Uh, I, I like the larger size quads myself, 180s and 200s. So kind of shy away from these 130s uh, this year quite a bit. But the last couple 130s that I've had in, I've really enjoyed. So um, now, yeah, and that's, a, that's about it, you guys, um, as far as pros and cons and the things I like and don't like about it. Um, I would definitely like to see some changes coming to the next version of this one. Maybe some of the stuff that I talked about would be nice to include on the next one. Um, maybe even seeing like a, uh, a JST or a uh, XT. I believe this smaller version of the, the XT60 is an XT30 would be nice on here. Just a little smaller connector. This is kind of large for this quad. Um, but if you're running it 4S, it's kind of nice to have a larger connector on there. But that's about it, guys, for the GB130. It's a super fun little quad. I, I enjoyed it. A um, couple small things I'd like to see added in later, but um, super easy to build and uh, kind of builds like a big quad, like I said. So if you want to check one of those out, they're under, I think, $200 right now it's a pretty pretty decent buy for for this it's not a four hundred dollar quad which is is nice because i have spent well over three hundred dollars trying to set up 130s and this one's uh below 200 bucks so and it probably performs better than the original 130 i built so thanks again for watching i'm justin davis i'll see you on the next one Every